Dennis O'Brien, the chairman and principal shareholder of telecommunications company Digicel, has been named as the donor of appliances which are being distributed to persons affected by the 2013 Christmas Eve disaster. Speaking at the distribution of some appliances in Bookament yesterday afternoon, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales revealed the Irish billionaire as the source of the donations, which he announced a few weeks ago. Though he has been asked on several occasions to reveal the donor, the PM, up until yesterday, said it would be announced at an opportune time. I didn't want to call the name of Mr. O'Brien and Digicel before the moment came when it should have been called. And all this, all this nonsense, all this nonsense about um, who it is and so on. That's not the issue. If the Prime Minister of a country comes and tells you we have, we have a worthy donor, I don't have to reveal the name yet. It will be revealed in good time, which is now is the time. Prime Minister Gonzales added that the decision was made to purchase the appliances, namely fridges, stoves and mattresses, from local businesses. We have to do it up in Vermont, we have to do it down in North Leeward, we have to do it in, in, in um, North Windward, and we have to do it in North Central, particularly in South Wales. What is important too is that we, we, we agreed with Digicel, we suggested to them and they accept this, accepted the suggestion that we will, we will identify in the country the stores and the fridges and the mattresses who, who supply normally and, um, and, and purchase from the people here. And exactly one month after the trough system devastated some parts of the country, the, di the distribution of some of these appliances started yesterday to affected persons on the leeward side of the island. Minister of Transport and Works Julian Francis was instrumental in ensuring that the persons affected by the floods were the ones to receive these appliances. Francis noted that the distribution could not have been made possible without the local suppliers. The government has made this arrangement, but there are persons, there are persons who have contributed also to this, like the suppliers that you are getting this evening are Utimez and Singer, and both folks have given us a good discount on the items, and these items are not paid for by the government, they are paid for by Digicel. Meanwhile, the Bridges Roads, that should be the Roads Building and General Services Authority, Bradza, is said to be awaiting 100 meters of Bailey Bridges to aid in the temporary crossing of some rivers here. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez outlined that the materials, which were expected to arrive here from a neighboring island, could not be transported by the French naval vessel Dumont de Ville, which arrived here yesterday with other relief supplies. Dr. Gonzalez says he expects the bridges to arrive here sometime next week and that they have already ordered more. It's the joy that the, the French vessel came, bringing 20 tons of food, water, medicine. They, they couldn't bring the 100 meters of daily bridges from St. Lucia because it's, it's, the, the containers couldn't be held in the hole. And I understand that because it's a naval vessel, you couldn't, you, you couldn't put it in front of the the, 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 the gun which is on the vessel but it's coming in on those coming in on Thursday and uh, and um, we are ordering also we are currently receiving goods for about 300 meters of daily bridges too. Four of seven pallets of medical supplies arrived in the country today on a special aircraft at the E.T. Joshua Airport from the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID. Program Director Alexandra Huerta told members of the media that the pallets containing the medical supplies are part of her organization's humanitarian assistance to this country. Huerta said that the majority of the supplies will be taken to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. Done in collaboration with our military partners, um, and this is uh, something that we've done in the past, and uh, we really appreciate all the support we get uh, from the people here in, in St. Vincent as well as our, um, our military collaborators. Huerta added that among the shipment of humanitarian supplies are educational toys and other necessities. 
The other supplies that are included are some um, some educational equipment, uh, educational supplies, um, kids supplies, school supplies, um, and I'm sorry. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Uh, and also we have some building material. Again, these were activities that were already designed prior to the rain, so it won't be in direct response to the flood, but it will help um, a need that was already identified before. So it just uh, it happens to be very timely given what happened uh, a couple weeks ago. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines leg of the Eastern Caribbean Appellate, Appellate Court will commence here on Monday. A list which was issued by the High Court here shows that there are approximately 46 cases to be heard. Among them are one judgment to be delivered, three applications, three High Court criminal appeals against conviction, 17 magisterial criminal appeals against sentence, 18 magisterial criminal appeals against conviction, three magisterial civil appeals, and one High Court civil appeal. The sitting will be presided over by President of the, of the Appeal Court, Justice Gertel Thom, along with Appeal Court Justices Louise Blenman, Davidson Batiste, and Tyrone Chung. This country has recorded its second road fatality for the year earlier today on the leeward side of the island. Reports are that the driver of this Jeep died after losing control of the vehicle in the Cools Hill area and going over an embankment. Two other persons inside the vehicle are said to be hospitalized at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. The police have not yet given the name of the deceased, only to say that it is a woman. The, inc the accident is said to have occurred at around 11 a.m. today. The first road fatality of the year was recorded with the death of 11-year-old student of Chapman's Village on the windward side of the island. <laughs> 